Stephanie Calaruso, and I'm the Director of Programs and Events at the Everhart Museum of Natural History, Science, and Art. We are live tonight in the Dorflinger Gallery this evening to welcome a very special guest to our YouTube channel for a presentation on presidential glass. We will be monitoring the chat feature throughout tonight's program, so feel free to post your questions. We're on a slight delay, so we'll try to get to as many questions as we can throughout the presentation. Our guest this evening is one of my favorite people, fascinating gentleman, Jim Asselstein. Mr. Asselstein is the founder, president, and director of the Dorflinger Glass Factory Museum in White Mills, Pennsylvania. James is a past trustee and chairman of the Dorflinger Sudum Wildlife Sanctuary, which owns and operates Dorflinger Glass Museum. He is a past president of the American Cut Glass Association and president of the fellows of the Corning Museum of Glass. He is an authority on Dorflinger Glass and the history of the Dorflinger companies. James is a friend of the Everhart and has assisted our curatorial department with our collection of Dorflinger Glass. And as you can see behind me, we have an incredible engraving. Um, and I'm sure Mr. Asselstein will talk a little bit about that. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce Jim um, and he will be doing an incredible presentation on presidential glass this evening. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here uh, today uh, to talk about Dorflinger's presidential glass. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, all of the uh, different orders that uh, Christian Dorflinger and his companies in Brooklyn and in White Mills, Pennsylvania produced uh, for the White House. Now, these presidential orders uh, were part of special orders done by the Dorflinger companies. And often what we see uh, is that the special order work done by Dorflinger and by their uh, competitors in the industry as well uh, were really innovative uh, and uh, really set the style for uh, the next period of glassware that was being produced in the, uh, the luxury cut glass industry in America in the 19th and then early uh, 20th centuries. So this image shows you our exhibit of presidential glass in the Dorfman Factory Museum. And we have examples from uh, the major services that Christian Dorflinger produced. The first of those on the left was produced in Brooklyn at Christian Dorflinger's Greenpoint Flint Glass Works in 1861 for the Lincoln administration. And that set of glassware produced in 1861 really helped establish Christian Dorflinger's reputation for excellence in the American luxury cut glass industry. Next to the Lincoln service to your right is a set of glassware produced by Christian Dorflinger in 1874 for President and Mrs. Grant. And then to the right of the Grant service uh, are examples from the set of glassware produced by Christian Dorflinger in 1891 for President Benjamin Harrison. And then finally at the end, I'll speak about the items on the extreme right, those items made at the Dorflinger factory in White Mills in 1917. And there is a connection here to, to President John F. Kennedy in 1963. Oh, and I might add just before I leave this slide, uh, the photograph above the case to the right shows a state dinner in the White House in 1902 when President Theodore Roosevelt, uh, his administration was in uh, power, and the table is set with Dorflinger glass, uh, and it includes pieces from all three of the table services that I just uh, described. This painting done um, in uh, about, about 1863 shows Christian Dorflinger at age 35. So this would have been just a couple of years after he produced the Lincoln State Service. Uh, the painting was most likely done in New York and about the time 
that Christian Dorflinger made the move from New York, from Brooklyn to uh, White Mills, Pennsylvania, and ultimately beginning the, uh, the Wayne County Glass Works, which became the center of his operations for the remainder of the company's uh, existence until 1921. Uh, so by this time, Christian Dorflinger had operated three factories in Brooklyn uh, and culminating with the uh, production of the Lincoln State Service in 1861. This trade card shows you the Greenpoint factory. Uh, the Greenpoint factory was located just where we at the upper edge of Brooklyn uh, and Queens uh, on Newtown Creek. Uh, and this was uh, the newest factory in Brooklyn. And it may well have been a factor uh, in the selection of Christian Dorflinger to produce the, uh, uh, the table service for the Lincoln White House. This wine glass uh, is an example from the Lincoln State Service. And I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of design that took place with the, uh, with the Lincoln State Service. Uh, so prior to the Lincoln administration, White House glass tended to be heavy with simple panels or flute designs uh, and with some modest engraving typically uh, with bands of grape leaves and, uh, and grapes. And the glass tended to be fairly solid and also fairly heavy. The Lincoln service was really a dramatic departure from previous examples of White House tableware. So if you look at this glass, you can see uh, it's much thinner, it's light and delicate. Uh, it has a company, combination of fine diamond cutting around the bottom of the bowl, a row of cut ovals right above the fine diamond cutting, and then a beautiful band of engraved decoration around the, uh, the top of the, uh, of the bowl of the glass, and then finally the, uh, the United States coat, coat of arms in the design. So uh, President and Mrs. Lincoln ordered the, uh, the Lincoln service in 1861, soon after President Lincoln uh, uh, took office, the set was ordered through a man named A.P. Zanaudi, uh, who was a retailer or glass company agent. And the set was delivered by Dorflinger in July of 1861. Mrs. Uh, Lincoln also ordered a new China service for the White House. And that set was ordered through E.V. Howitt and Company, uh, which was a China glass and China retailer in New York City. We actually have a copy of the original invoice for the Lincoln service, which describes the set as one set of glassware, rich cut and engraved with the U.S. coat of arms. And the cost of the, uh, the service was $1,500. Unfortunately, the invoice does not uh, describe or give us the actual number of pieces in the set, but we do know that uh, the um, China service that uh, President and Mrs. Lincoln ordered was for was intended to serve three to four dozen diners, uh, according to Jane Spillman. Uh, in her 1989 book entitled White House Glassware. And she concludes, and we would agree, that the Lincoln Glass Service probably was also uh, designed or intended to provide the number of pieces that would be needed uh, for uh, up to four dozen diners. And finally, it's interesting to note that the invoice was actually signed by both Mary Todd Lincoln and by uh, Abraham Lincoln as well. Uh, there were also several uh, subsequent reorders of the uh, Lincoln service in uh, different administrations uh, after the Lincoln service. Some of those, like the Lincoln service originally, were produced by Christian Dorflinger, and others were produced by other glass manufacturers, including J. Horan Company in Corning, uh, the New England Glass Company in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and finally, uh, T.G. Hawks and Company uh, in Corning as well. Uh, 
I want to show you a few other examples of the Lincoln service. So in addition to the wine, and this wine is in the collection of the Everhart Museum, and it is actually on exhibit in the Dorflinger Glass Museum in White Mills. The next piece uh, is in color, which makes this piece really interesting. Again, same design, slightly smaller than the colorless wine glass. Uh, and this glass is also in a collection of the uh, Dorflinger Glass Museum. You do not see very many examples of color, pieces in color uh, in the presidential glassware. The Lincoln service was noteworthy because it did have wine glasses in, uh, in color. Now that was very helpful for the servers at state functions in the White House because these color glasses showed the level of wine for white wines very clearly and they were really designed to help prevent spills so the server would know where to fill the, uh, the glass. If you'll also note the foot design on both of these examples of stemware from the Lincoln service, uh, they almost look like a bird's foot uh, and they are an adaptation of a design that has been called the Brooklyn Star uh, that was very uh, frequently used in glassware produced in New York in the 1850s and 1860s. And the actual Brooklyn Star foot design shows up very clearly here on the punch cup from the, uh, the Lincoln State Service. Uh, and this also gives you a nice overview or an, and detail of both the cutting in the design, the fine diamond cutting, the ovals, but also the engraved design, and most especially the U.S. coat of arms with the eagle, uh, the olive branch, and the arrows in the eagle's two talons, and the ribbon uh, with the, uh, the, word, the, uh, the motto, e pluribus unum, and all of this surrounded by an engraved shield. So the lightness and delicacy, the beauty of the engraving really come through um, in these pieces. And this design fit very neatly with the change in design for other furnishings that was taking place in the 1860s. So in furniture, for example, this was the period of the Renaissance revival where you also had light and delicate decorations. And we see that reflected uh, in the Lincoln State Service. So I'm gonna pause here, uh, Stephanie, in case we have any uh, questions, and then I'll go on to talk about the grant service. Yeah, Jim, we actually do have um, a couple of questions. So I'm gonna combine them a little bit. One of the questions was how many pieces from the Lincoln Service does the Dorflinger Factory Museum have represented in its collection? And the second question is, did the Lincolns help design the service? Uh, so the answer to the first question, we have the factory sample uh, wine glass for the Lincoln service in our collection. Uh, and, um, the, and the answer to the second question is, we do not believe that the Lincolns were directly involved in the design of the glassware, uh, but it is likely that we believe that a factory sample was sent to uh, Mary Todd Lincoln for her approval. So Dorflinger and his cutters and engravers did the design work, prepared a factory sample and sent it to uh, the Lincolns for their review and, uh, and approval. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Okay. Good, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna do one other thing before I go to the grant service, and this is a really interesting element uh, that relates to the Lincoln Service. This uh, state service uh, was very popular. It received a great deal of public attention, uh, and not surprisingly, private individuals wanted glassware just like the president had. So uh, as many of you are probably familiar, Mary Todd Lincoln extensively refurbished the White House, the new China service, the new glassware service. This uh, received a fair amount of publicity. And so private individuals contacted uh, Dorflinger 
and, and placed orders for glassware just like the president had, but without the US coat of arms. And I'm gonna show you a couple of good examples of those pieces as well. So here are a water goblet on the left and a wine glass on the right. And you can see that the pattern in the design, both of the cutting and of the engraving, the shape of the pieces, even that interesting design on the foot are exactly the same as the Lincoln State Service, but without the, um, without the, uh, the US coat of arms on the pieces. Uh, the goblet is actually plain without any additional decoration. The wine glass on the right has a monogram indicating that it was a special order uh, for an individual who wanted their own monogram on the piece. And here's a, a close-up view of the, uh, of the bowl. Uh, and uh, the Everhart Museum also has a number of pieces from another special order with a different monogram uh, of this, uh, this example, using the Lincoln design, but without the US uh, coat of arms. And we often informally refer to these pieces as Lincoln lookalikes. So they match the design, but, um, uh, but don't have the US coat of arms, weren't part of the presidential order. And finally, here's a last example, uh, a small whiskey jug, again, in the Lincoln design, just the same, but this uh, jug has a monogram as well, all of these pieces are in the collection of the Dorflinger uh, Flat Factory Museum. So that wraps up the Lincoln service. Let me now go on to talk about the Grant service. In 1874, President Grant ordered a set of glassware from Dorflinger in the Hob diamond pattern for the marriage of their daughter Nellie to an Englishman named Algernon Sartoris. Uh, so these are examples of Dorflinger glass in the, um, uh, in the Hob diamond pattern, identical to the pieces in the, uh, in the Grant service. The wedding uh, took place at the White House on May 21st, 1874 in the uh, East Room, uh, and the wedding was followed by the wedding breakfast and the glassware was ordered for the, uh, for the wedding breakfast. Uh, the original orders uh, for the grant service in 1874, that order had US, uh, President Grant's initials USG done on the, uh, the rim of the glassware above the Hob Diamond design. There were also two reorders of the grant service, a reorder in 1876 and final, a final reorder in 1880 and some of those pieces in the reorders did not have the USG initials on the rims of the glassware. Now these pieces are interesting examples. Now in the 1870s, we are starting to see designs that are a little heavier and a little more elaborately cut. You also see a different finish on the foot, what we call a flash star design on the foot. And so this is an interesting, the 1870s is really an interesting period uh, in Dorflinger's work and in Dorflinger glassware. And we are starting to make the transition to the much more elaborate designs that took place in what we call the brilliant period that really began in about 1876 with the Philadelphia Exposition and continued uh, until World War I when the heavier elaborate cut glass uh, where it began to go out of fashion. So the Hob Diamond uh, design and pattern is a very nice, simple design, but it, you're starting to see a little change from uh, the light and very fine and delicate design uh, and the heavy engraving that we saw uh, in, the, uh, in the Lincoln State Service. Another example, uh, this uh, color wine uh, is also represented in the, uh, the grant service. And some of the grant pieces uh, had the, uh, the color foot on them as well, as this, uh, this piece shows you uh, as well. This decanter is another example. Uh, there is a decanter uh, in the White House collection 
identical to this one. This is a small decanter, a one pint decanter uh, for cordials. Uh, Dorothy Daniels in her kind of landmark book in the 1950s on American cut glass misattributed the White House uh, decanter to Gillander uh, and Sons in Philadelphia. But we now know from the grant service that in fact, uh, the piece in the White House uh, is from the grant service as well. Now, be, President Grant purchased this set of glassware using his own personal funds because his daughter's wedding was a private family function, not a government state function. So he didn't want to use the Lincoln State Service. And that's the reason that he purchased the, uh, the service directly from Dorflinger. And because he paid for that service, uh, it made sense and it was appropriate for him to take most of that service with him when he and Mrs. Grant left the, uh, the White House. And as a result, many pieces from the Grant service have come down through the years uh, through uh, descendants of the, uh, of the Grant family. And we're fortunate to have many of those uh, uh, pieces uh, uh, in existence and out there and available. And I'll tell you one exciting discovery, uh, literally this afternoon, uh, the Dorflinger Factory Museum acquired a picture with the grant initials USG from the original grant service and that very shortly will go on exhibit in the, uh, in the museum. And so Stephanie will pause again. That finishes uh, my comments on the grant service if there are any questions before I move on to the Harrison service. Yes, actually, Jim, so this question um, as a collector and also as someone who uh, manages a museum, how difficult is it to acquire an entire service? And I guess more specifically, a service that was, you know, used by a presidential administration. So if you want a special order service used by presidential administrations, it's pretty tough. Uh, so those pieces typically uh, will need to be pieces that have, like the grant service, that have come down in the grant family. Most of the White House glassware, uh, the state services, have stayed in the White House. Now, up until the Theodore Roosevelt administration, from time to time, there were sales of presidential glassware from prior administrations. And so occasionally you will find pieces that were actually in the White House. But most of the pieces that we have of presidential glass, uh, particularly from the Lincoln service and from the Harrison service that I'll talk about next, were factory samples. And we are very fortunate that when Christian Dorflinger produced these special orders, he would keep a one example of every piece in the service. And he did that because inevitably he knew there would be breakage and they would get reorders from the White House to replace the broken pieces. And it was relatively simple then to simply take the factory sample and use that to reproduce pieces for the subsequent orders. And we're very fortunate that many of those factory samples have come down through the years in, uh, in the collections of Dorflinger family members. Additionally, when the Dorflinger factory closed in 1921, uh, John Dorflinger uh, purchased the contents of the factory, including uh, all of the existing um, uh, factory samples of the special orders. And many of the pieces that we exhibit that the Dorflinger Glass Museum exhibits that are in the collection of the Everhart Museum and in other museums around the country were those factory samples. And it's actually especially nice to have those because unlike White House pieces, they were never really used. And so they have tended to uh, survive uh, in excellent condition, whereas some of the actual White House pieces have been damaged uh, through uh, fairly extensive use over the years. There are examples from the Lincoln and also the Harrison State Services in the White House today. They're no longer used, but they are exhibited in the White House. 
There are also examples in the collection of the Smithsonian Institution, and a few pieces are also exhibited there with um, White House China. And some other pieces have been given to prominent museums like the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, the Corning Museum of Glass, and the Philadelphia Museum of Art as well. That's amazing. And Jim, I just want to follow up with that. I'm so glad you mentioned factory sample because in preparation for this talk, you and I talked a little bit about the factory sample. So could you just explain to our audience what is a factory sample? Sure. So it, it is um, when, when the special order was manufactured, they would do an extra piece of every piece in the set. Uh, and that way, and then they would store those pieces and have them readily available in the event that they received a, a, a subsequent order from the White House for replacement pieces. And in fact, this happened uh, uh, in numerous uh, instances. So there were reorders of the Lincoln service uh, by a number of subsequent administrations. And there were a fewer reorders, but still some reorders as well. Uh, of the uh, of the Harrison State Service as well. And so those factory samples were useful in the manufacturing process for those replacement sets uh, and uh, provide wonderful uh, surviving examples for us to document the individual pieces that were in these state services. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate your response. Great. Okay. Let's turn now to the Harrison Service. So the Lincoln service was so popular that it remained the state service used for all state functions in the White House for 30 years, from 1861 until 1891. But tastes began to change. Uh, the more modern trends were for heavier, more elaborate cuttings and different and more elaborate patterns. And so by 1891, President and Mrs. Benjamin Harrison uh, ordered a new set of glassware to provide a new state service for the White House. And that order was ordered through M.W. Beveridge, uh, who was a Washington retailer. And that service was produced by C. Dorflinger and Sons in White Mills, Pennsylvania. The order was for five dozen goblets, champagne glasses, red and white wine glasses, Apollinaris tumblers that are kind of small tumblers, finger bowls uh, and ice cream plates, as well as eight water bottles and eight decanters uh, as serving pieces in the set. And the cost of the original Harrison service was $1,973.50. And that set was delivered in November of 1891. Now the image that you have on your screen now uh, is for the original proposed design for the Harrison service. And so uh, Christian Dorflinger produced this wine glass. It is a variation of Dorflinger's pattern number 210. And this glass was sent to Mrs. Harrison for her approval. And unfortunately she rejected it. And we think she rejected it because if you look at the sides of the glass, you'll see those hob stars create bumps in the surface of the glassware. We think that when Mrs. Harrison held the glass, she thought it was a little bit cumbersome uh, and a little bit um, uh, uh, unsteady. And so she sent the glass back and said, I would really like a different design. And as a result, Christian Dorflinger use this design cut in the Russian pattern. Now the Russian pattern was originally designed by a man named Philip McDonald. He worked for the T.G. Hawks Company in Corning, New York, and this design was developed and patented in, in, My apologies. Um, uh, so uh, he worked for the T.G. Hawks Company in Corning. Uh, this became one of the most popular and famous cut glass patterns, uh, and it really ushered in uh, what we call the brilliant period, where glassware was more elaborately done uh, and you had these deeper and more intricate patterns. By 1891, 
the original patent for this pattern had expired. And as a result, Christian Dorflinger could use this pattern for the Harrison service. And that's what, uh, that's what he did. Uh, so you can see the Russian pattern on the bowl of the glass, the notch stem. On, this is the factory sample wine glass for the Harrison service. And on the foot, you can actually see the original paper label of the Dorflinger original paper label on the piece. And here is a close up of the presidential coat of arms on the Harrison service. And uh, you'll probably recognize that this coat of arms is much closer to what we actually use today uh, than the Lincoln service was uh, with the eagle with uh, outstretched wings. So a beautiful design uh, and a very uh, popular design at the time, uh, very appropriate uh, for, the, uh, for the Harrison service. The uh, Harrison service was also, like the Lincoln service, reordered by subsequent administrations, uh, including uh, the Roosevelt administration, Theodore Roosevelt, and also uh, the administration of Woodrow Wilson. These two examples are factory extras. So in some instances, in addition to the factory samples, uh, Dorflinger would make some extras and keep those readily available. So again, if there was a reorder, uh, he could um, uh, fill that reorder fairly quickly. Uh, the glass on the left is a brandy and soda tumbler. That's a large, fairly heavy glass. Uh, and the brandy and soda tumblers were not part of the original Harrison service, but they were subsequently ordered by Teddy Roosevelt. He wanted those. Uh, and then on the right, uh, you have an extra uh, for, the, uh, for the champagne glass for the Harrison service. And both of these, all of the glass cutting and polishing are done, but you'll see the blank shield uh, where it's ready to have the uh, engraving of the presidential coat of arms added on uh, as well. Uh, so these are other uh, additional examples of, from the Harrison service that Dorflinger produced uh, that were never completed and actually sent to uh, the White House. And again, because John Dorflinger saved so much of this material, we're really fortunate to have some of these pieces uh, as well. And those were the comments I was gonna offer on the Harrison service. Uh, Stephanie, we can pause once more for questions here and then I'll wrap up uh, by talking about the uh, of the Kennedy example. Yes, okay, so Jim, um, there is a label, I believe it's on the tumbler, the Harrison tumbler that is being um, shown right now. Someone would like to know uh, if they could hear a little bit more about the label on the foot of this piece. Absolutely, so uh, one, one thing that is a little bit of a challenge for us as Dorflinger collectors is that Dorflinger never permanently marked his glass. Some of the other companies did, they would put their little logo on the piece with an acid stamp. Uh, and that makes life a lot easier for collectors. Dorflinger never did that, but he began to mark his pieces in 1888 with this small round paper label uh, with the company's logo. And interestingly enough, uh, if you compare Dorflinger's logo with Baccarat's logo uh, for French crystal, they're identical except for the name. Uh, so we think what actually happened is Dorflinger borrowed the Baccarat design for his label, paper label and just substituted Dorflinger for Baccarat on the, uh, on the label itself. Uh, so uh, we don't know why Dorflinger never permanently marked his glass, but he didn't. Uh, but some pieces have survived with their original paper factory label. The obvious drawback for a paper label is the first time you use the piece and wash it, the paper label is gonna wash off. So relatively few people, pieces still have their original paper labels. Great, and um, Jim, I have a, another question. It's a little bit more general. And the question is, uh, why is a set of glass called a service? Okay, uh, it's uh, because a service will consist of a, a number of pieces of glassware. If you go back to the 1850s before Dorflinger produced the Lincoln State Service, typically what you would have is one wine glass 
And for the different courses in the meal, you would rinse that wine glass in what is called a wine rinser or, uh, and then uh, reuse that glass later on. But uh, beginning uh, in the late 1850s, just about the time of the Lincoln State Service, you would have a place setting of glassware that would carry you through all of the different courses in the meal. And it would typically consist of a water goblet and a champagne glass and a glass for red wine and a glass for white wine. Uh, often you would have a sherry glass or a port glass. And then finally, uh, a cordial for the, uh, for the end of the meal. So you'd have a series of all of those individual pieces of glassware. Uh, and so we typically, those are either, uh, those are typically referred to as, as a place setting, much like the silverware that goes with the dinner as well. Awesome. And I have one last question um, before we wrap the questions. It's actually more personal and it's a little tough, but um, do you have a favorite service or a service that when you acquired, was, you were just like, wow, this is amazing. People ask me, I, did, I get asked that a fair uh, amount. It's really tough to pick. So I could probably give you 10 but it would be really hard to pick, uh, pick just one. Uh, I think the presidential services are uh, really outstanding examples of Dorflinger's work. Uh, and so they are definitely among my favorites. Uh, there is a beautiful special order piece that was done uh, as a wedding anniversary gift in 1879. We don't know who that was made for, but it's also one of my favorite pieces. It's another interesting transition piece uh, from the earlier simpler designs to the more elaborate brilliant period uh, pieces as well. Uh, so that one is, uh, is very near and dear to my heart as are examples from the Vanderbilt wedding service that are these over the top pieces with more modern stone wheel engraving uh, cranberry and green colors and really elaborate silver bases to the uh, to the pieces as well. So it's hard to pick one, but I'll mention those as good examples of some of Dorflinger's special order work that I think are, are truly outstanding. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> okay, uh, let me wrap up with another example of Dorflinger glass that has a presidential connection, but much later. So the Dorflinger factory in White Mills closed in 1921. Uh, a combination of factors, the challenges of World War I, uh, that interrupted operation of the factory, changing tastes, transition within the family. Christian Dorflinger died uh, in 1915. Prohibition, which affected uh, all of the sale of wine glasses and, and whiskey decanters and other barware, all of those factors came together uh, and the family decided to close the factory's operation in 1921. Now, the image I'm showing you now is another special order that Dorflinger produced in 1917, so just a few years before the factory closed. We know this uh, order was produced in 1917. We know that Hermann Neugebauer, who was Christian Dorflinger's head engraver, was the man who did the engraving work on these pieces. And it is really magnificent. You have this beautiful sailing ship with the American flag and these really interesting engraved borders on the pieces. Uh, and this set, we don't know who it was made for, but this set included water goblets like you see on the left and wine glasses as you see on the right. And I'll show you a couple of uh, details of the engraved design work, which is really outstanding. And here's an example, here's a close up view of the engraving on the, the sailing ship. Here's a view of part of the engraved border. And here's another view of a different part of the engraved border. We see similar examples of these engraved borders on other um, uh, special order work that Dorflinger did about the same time period, about the 1917 time period. So these are really wonderful examples of late work 
that Christian Dorflinger was doing really toward where the Dorflinger companies uh, was doing late in the, uh, in the factory's operation. Now the White House connection for these pieces is much later. And the White House connection is to President John F. Kennedy. In 1963, President Kennedy visited Milford, Pennsylvania uh, to dedicate Pinchot Institute at Gray Towers. And when the president's visit was announced, uh, the Pike County Chamber of Commerce went to visit John Dorflinger in his museum and shop in his father's old general store in White Mills. And they purchased a goblet identical to this one to present to President Kennedy at the dedication. Uh, and uh, they thought this was the perfect gift to give to President Kennedy because the set was produced in 1917 the year of Kennedy's birth, and because President Kennedy had been in the Navy, was a sailor, and, uh, and the piece had this beautiful engraved ship on the design. Uh, and so a goblet identical to this one uh, was presented to, uh, to President Kennedy. Um, unfortunately, uh, when the Kennedy's things were moved from the White House uh, to the Kennedy Library, uh, the goblet, that goblet was broken uh, the pieces still remain in the, uh, in the Kennedy Library in Massachusetts. Uh, but we now have found surviving examples, both of the goblets and of the, uh, the wine glass. And this is really the last presidential connection of examples of, uh, of Dorflinger's work, but a particularly fitting uh, and appropriate example uh, as well. And with that, I'm going to wrap up by saying thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, uh, make this presentation. Um, we have wonderful examples of Dorflinger's special order work, including presidential glass in the, connection, in the collections of our three local museums here in Northeast Pennsylvania, the Everhart and the Dorflinger Glass Museum and the Dorflinger Factory Museum. Um, uh, this slide shows you our hours. We'll be open through mid-December. Uh, we're closed Monday and Tuesday, but we're open uh, every other day uh, during the week. The Dorflinger Glass Museum uh, is open exactly the same days. The only difference is they close an hour earlier than uh, we do, and we hope that you will uh, come to visit us. Uh, and we uh, absolutely love uh, working and collaborating with the Everhart Museum. Uh, which also has uh, an outstanding collection of Dorflinger glass. And it's definitely worth a visit there if you haven't been uh, recently as well. Thank you so much, Jim. And um, first off, I wanna thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out to do this talk. It was wonderful. Um, and I just want to let everyone know that if you do get a chance to go up to Wayne County, it is worth you will be a lover of glass and Dorflinger glass, especially if you are able to visit both the factory museum and the glass museum. So please take the opportunity to do so. The Everhart Museum right now, uh, currently on view, we have Eyes on America. So this talk today, tonight was inspired by the current exhibit, which will be up until the end of the year. Our museum is open from 10 to five on Saturdays and 12 to five on Sundays. And um, so we appreciate it again, James. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone has a good night. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome.